On December 2nd, 2021, Whatever Marco accomplished one of the most insane feats in the history of Minecraft speedrunning. The world record he broke, no, shattered, is basically universally agreed upon as the ultimate test of skill and versatility for a runner. This category, which is held in such high regard, is not a single speedrun, rather it's three. You see, there are three main random seed glitchless categories, pre 1.9, 1.9 to 1.15, and 1.16 plus, and the combination of these is known as combined RSG, CRSG for short. With nearly 4,000 unique verified leaderboard times for the RSG categories, they contain some of the most heavily contested records in all of Minecraft speedrunning, which just further proves the sheer insanity of Marco's accomplishment. It however, wasn't always like this for Marco, because prior to this achievement, he hyper-focused on one of these versions in particular, pre 1.9. Why, you might ask? Well, after seeing Illumina's former 2353 world record, which stood for nearly a year, he got inspired to start running and found it quite fun. That and the fact that his PC was garbage, so he couldn't really run any other categories. The first pre-1.9 random seed glitchless run he posted was on October 23rd, 2020 and featured him beating the game in 3307. A month and a half later, he got his first sub-30 with a 2714. Just a month after that, in early January, he broke into the top three for the first time with a 2511 and soon after got his first sub 25. The next few months featured a bit of a PB drought for Marco as he was playing other categories, but on June 6th, he came back with a vengeance, putting up a time of 2303. Now, you may be noticing a trend here. He's been showing fast and consistent improvement and his times were landing him near the top of the leaderboards, but up to that point, not on top. You see, something you need to understand about Marco is that he wanted the record, and he would stop at nothing to get it. Stop at nothing, he did, because on June 28th, he got a time of 20 minutes and 7 seconds, breaking the previous world record by 43 seconds. With such a crazy run, inevitably the new personal best started slowing down a lot, but a little over 3 months later, he got a time so insane that to this day, no one has ever beaten it. Right before I talk about the run, I just want to remind you all that this number is consistently growing and I fear what happens when it gets too high, so be sure to unsubscribe if you enjoy the video. It all started in a plains biome and after grabbing some wood and getting stone tools, he grabbed 8 pieces of iron and started smelting. At first he only got enough to craft shears, but at the surface he put the rest in the furnace and started grabbing some resources that he would need in the run. These include gravel for arrows and flint and steel, leaves for building blocks, cows for food, and wool from shearing sheep for beds. Once his iron was successfully made into ingots, he crafted a sword, bucket, and flint and steel, and with plenty of food and blocks, entered the nether with a nearby lava pool at 440. His spawn was pretty ideal, since a fortress was right there, but the blaze drop rates weren't exactly great. In fact, they were pretty awful, with him going 6 for 17, but due to his good nether spawn, he was still able to leave the nether at 8 minutes. In order to explain this next part of the run, you need to understand how pre-1.9 towers work. In order to get pearls, a tower is built up 128 blocks above the ground, and by sleeping at the top, he could just die in order to reset mob spawns. At the bottom, he dug 45 blocks into the ground, and this is in order to kill endermen and other mobs with fall damage. By burning to death at the bottom, he was right back at the top, and now it was time for him to hope for good RNG, because there was a chance that very few endermen would spawn, and on top of that, they only drop pearls 50% of the time. After only getting one in the first cycle, it's safe to say that he wasn't expecting to see nine in the next one. Five, six, what? Yeah, How many is this? What the? The third and fourth cycles collectively gave him three spawns, but the fifth gifted him with five. With two more in the sixth, he had killed a total of 20 endermen in the span of two minutes, and when he checked to see how many pearls he had, the number was only visible for a frame of a second, but it read 12. This pace was not only fast, it was the fastest ever. At 1406, he threw his first eye and hoped for a close stronghold, but after following the path for a bit, it was clear that it wasn't going to be. From when he left the tower, it took him around 4 minutes to get to the portal room, and he wasted no time to enter the end. Fortunately, he didn't craft all his pearls into eyes, because he spawned on an island, and once he was on the mainland, it was time for him to battle the dragon. Basically, dragons in this version charge at random intervals, and Marco had to deal large blows of damage from the beds he crafted from the wool he got earlier. In the process, he started bowing down the towers so the dragon couldn't heal, and after just 2 beds, it was below half health. The third bed brought it down to one hit, and after anxiously awaiting for the final dragon charge, it happened. Oh my fucking... Oh my fucking... Yes! Arthur, let's go! Let's Wait, fucking go! 
19 minutes and 45 seconds was the final time. As stated earlier, this run is still the world record in pre-1.9 random seed glitches, but what does that mean for his combined RSG total? Well, at the time, he had a 14.18 in 1.16+, plus and a 19.44 in 1.9 to 1.15, which comes out to a CRSG time of 53.47. Now, this time already put him near the top, but you would be mistaken if you thought he was going to settle for that. On November 14th, almost a month and a half after his pre-1.9 world record, he got a time in version 1.15 that put him on the most exclusive list in Minecraft speedrunning. Yeah, that's right, he joined Illumina, Doi Pingu, Curryway, and Corbanos in holding a record in two main RSG categories simultaneously. Without further ado, the run. He spawned right next to a coastal village and after grabbing beds and getting wood, he crafted a boat and doors. With that boat, he took a villager on a bit of a journey. In this version, the way runners get ender pearls is via trading for them and by looting ocean structures such as shipwrecks, buried treasures and monuments, Marco could ideally get enough emeralds and gold for 12 or more pearls. The first shipwreck had 5 emeralds, the second one contained 13, and the third one gave him 8 more. Basically, 5 minutes into the run, he just needed a monument in order to trade for enough pearls, and what you know, there was one of them right near the ship. While searching for a magma ravine to enter the nether, he came across a fourth shipwreck containing eight more emeralds, and as nice as that was, he still wasn't in the nether. Soon enough, at nine minutes, he found that nether entry, and his nether spawn was on a branch of the fortress, with, get this, a blaze spawner right in front of him. So yeah, this run turned from good to great in the blink of an eye, but he still needed to get good blaze drop rates. Unfortunately, they were just average with him going 7 for 14, and since one of them was used to craft a brewing stand to turn that villager into a cleric, he left the nether with 6. After sleeping upon overworld entry, he was ready to get his pearls at 12 minutes. The cleric villager only has a 2 out of 3 chance of showing the pearl trade, and fortunately, Marco was able to breathe a sigh of relief upon seeing that icon. At 13 minutes, he threw his first eye, and at the moment, this wasn't looking like a world record run. The record at the time from Doi Pingu had him throw his first eye before the 10 minute mark. So what makes Marco's run so good? Well, I'll let him tell you. Wait, that, that's the border room! I'm going to work on base. So yeah, the direction he happened to be traveling in was not only right toward the stronghold, but the portal room was exposed in the ocean. After the first cycle of trades, he had 8 pearls, and after heading to the room and seeing one eye, he desperately awaited for the villager to restock the trades. Perhaps he was a little too impatient, because after accidentally hitting a villager, it bumped up the price of pearls and he was only able to get 2 of them instead of 3. Fortunately, it didn't take too long for the villager to restock for a third time, and finally, at 4 1437, he was ready to enter the end. Upon entry, he rushed to the center fountain, and with buckets of water and lava, he made obsidian for the one cycle. After patiently awaiting the perch, it finally happened, and with a somewhat scuffed one cycle, he was able to finish the run with a time of 1617, basically tying Doi Pingu's record. 1617? What? 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 One slight caveat. He was using an illegal mod named Starlight, which basically makes the game run better, so this time will probably never officially get verified. Funnily enough, so was Doi Pinku, so basically the two fastest 1.15 times ever will never appear on the leaderboards. The way I see it, using Starlight doesn't take away from the run whatsoever, so with that, his new CRSG time was 50-20. Not only did this run give him the record, but he was on the verge of becoming the first player to ever get a sub-50 combined RSG, and his 1.7 16 time wasn't even particularly good. For some backstory, on February 26, 2021, Corbanos became the first person to ever get a sub 1 hour CRSG. Back then, it wasn't a question of when, rather if, someone would ever get a sub 50. In fact, the combined world records weren't even sub 50, adding up to 54.30. It's been over 3 quarters of a year since then, and needless to say, times have changed drastically. Because with two world records on his plate, Marco was within striking distance of that coveted sub 50. With a 14.18 
18 PB in 1.16, he had immense room for improvement and on December 2nd, he vastly exceeded all expectations. It all started when he spawned on a coast and after grabbing wood to craft doors in a boat, he set sail for the ocean and located a shipwreck containing 10 iron ingots. After crafting iron tools and getting flint and steel, he located an underground lava pool and entered the nether at 218. His spawn was right next to a treasure bastion and after grabbing the gold on the bridge, he led the piglins to a hole where the bartering commenced. The initial trades gave Marco plenty of pearls, but unfortunately only one piece of obsidian. Not to worry because the chest came to the rescue and upon checking the trades a second time, he saw that he had enough string to craft four beds. At five minutes on the dot, he pearled out of the bastion and after traveling across the lava for a bit, he saw a fortress and entered it at 6.30. At this point, the run was on pretty good pace, but good quickly turned into great when the first six blazes he killed all dropped rods. He was out of the nether at 7.50. 56, and the first IE threw pointed directly into a tree, so he wasn't able to get the exact angle. No worries, because after pearling forward a bit, he threw a second eye that also went directly into a tree. A few pearls later, and with a third eye only kinda going into a tree, he noticed a bit of an angle change. After running forward a bit, he threw a fourth eye that turned around, signifying that he was right on top of the stronghold. After choosing a chunk that seemed right, he dug into it at 10 minutes and located the portal room just 20 seconds later. 31 was the end entry time, and with plenty of leeway to break the sub-50 CRSG barrier, he crafted his beds and patiently awaited for the purge. No, me pasó. HDP. Nice. He pulled the 1 in 13 chance of an instant dragon perch, and with a sub 1 minute end fight, he was able to secure a final time of 11.30. So now begs the golden question, what did this run mean for his combined RSG time? Well, he broke the 50 minute barrier alright, same with the 49 minute one, and the 48 minute one. His combined RSG time totaled 47 minutes and 32 seconds. If you combine all the current world records, you get a time of 45.26, a mere 2 minutes faster than the combination of Marco's times. If you want to know how his 47.32 CRSG stacks up against other runners, well, look no further than Doi Pingu and Infium who share a second place time of 50.33. In other words, one of if not the most prestigious world record in Minecraft speedrunning is 3 minutes faster than 2nd place. Now in case you thought Marco was gonna settle down for a bit, you thought wrong because he's now grinding for the 1.16 world record. If he manages to snag it, he will go down as the only person to hold every RSG record at once. If you want to watch his attempts, he streams live at twitch.tv slash whatevermarco. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great day.